Can you hear me? One love. What up, what up, what up? I am sitting at home about to write some ad copy. And I said, fuck it. Why don't I do it live? Change the game up a little bit. Kind of recap on the week, do some Q&A, which I think will help me write better anyway. And we'll see what happens from there. Mm. What's up? Mika, Micah, Mika, Mika, Micah, Micah, Mika, Micah, 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 Mika. Um, so, yeah, I guess I can talk about a few different things here. Um, yeah, Dustin, that is right. It's getting rid of the Gene Pool Lifetime Membership. So I wrote a couple things uh, in the description of this. One was, hi, Sherry. One was um, writing live ad copy. So for those of you that struggle writing, um, this will be helpful for you to see so you can kind of understand the process. And um, I do consider myself a pretty damn strong writer, especially when I want to be. Um, and uh, I'm excited to share kind of some tactics with you guys there. Uh, do some Q&A if you have any questions. We can talk about some real shit. And um, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right. Um, Tim, what's up? Been talking to Talk Awesome. Dude, you know, that's my little cousin. Talk, she's actually my little cousin. There's a giant glare when I have his glasses on, so I'll try and do these without him. Um, hi, Karen. Uh, let's see. Eric Goodell. Um, Alex, what's good? I see you. Um, so let's talk about writing ad copy. I wonder if I can share my screen here. I know I can. I don't know if I can do it while I'm already going. Hold up. Because I'm doing this from my desktop. I never do this from my desktop. Let's see. I know there's got to be a fucking way to get this done. Hold up. Uh, try one more thing. Nope. Nope. Not working. All right, not gonna work. I'll have to call an audible here. All right, so let's talk about it. Um, uh, stretching it out. Um, lifetime offer. Why are we getting rid of our lifetime membership? So let me talk about kind of how that came about and kind of give you guys some origin because it's a really dope strategy um, for a lot of people. And I think a lot of you can use it. So um, about probably eight months ago, uh, maybe even a little bit longer than that. I had um, a quick lunch. I wouldn't even call it lunch, but we just met up um, with Kaylin and Brandon of Lady Boss. Um, dope ass company. They're absolutely crushing it right now. And um, uh, I think we're just talking on Facebook Messenger and then they were in San Diego. I said, yeah, let's connect and meet up. So we met up, just kind of shot the shit, just kind of seeing each other in the industry because everybody knows everyone. And um, we were just discussing kind of like, what was working, what wasn't working, and the biggest levers for the business. And then one thing that they said was working well for them at the time was adding a lifetime membership and saying that the lifetime membership take rate was um, like six times of that than an annual membership. And I said, okay, cool. I'm down to experiment with it and try it. And there was, I, at first I was hesitant because I'm like lifetime, like, well, holy shit, long term, what's that going to do to our um, to the amount of money that we're generating. And then I was looking at the stats of the gene pool, which is my membership site. 
And on average, people were staying for about five months. And so I said, okay, well, all right. And I'm kind of doing the math in my head, but then bigger than that, I said, Billy, what's the quickest way to make money in your business? And it was making an offers, right? Going live, doing a webinar or something like that and asking someone to buy stuff, pretty simple. Well, if I can create something where every single Tuesday at nine o'clock, and this is what I've been doing for the last two, three years, at nine o'clock where I'm teaching and there's an audience there, forever until the end of time, I will have some kind of vehicle where I can sell stuff, right? Um, if I have actually have a product or service that helps people. So I kind of take a step back and I said, and Brandon and I were discussing this, we said, when someone buys a lifetime membership, it's an identity that they can have for life. And the challenge was when people were doing it monthly, it's kind of like, well, when you're in it, you're in it, but once you're out, you're out. And I didn't want that. As we're building a brand and something that's going to last long term, I thought it was more important that we have people carry the genius identity forever. And that's why I was okay with the lifetime offer. And so that's why I was like, well, fuck it, let's really build there. And there's always ways to monetize shit. So I was like, okay, well, Billy, if you're not leading with the money, what's the smartest way to do it? So anyways, we tested the lifetime offer and people jumped all over it. It was fantastic. Um, it, it, it generated a lot of revenue, but also too, the people who bought the lifetime membership were way more bought in. They didn't approach the trainings and the resources that we were giving as this fucking like trial. Like, oh, let me just put my foot in and see if the water's cold. Let me see, let me just touch it. Oh no, it's too cold. I won't jump in. They're like, fuck it. I jumped in. This is it. I'm going in. And those people were more receptive to really be a part of this thing, a part of this movement. That was the biggest thing for us. So um, it worked. It went like crazy. And I believe we ended up getting somewhere, and this is ballpark, around like 2,500 lifetime members. These are people who believe in what we do. They're with us for the long run. I'm like, wow, that's some powerful ass shit. Um, so we got kind of like almost split down the middle to give you reference. We're like 50% of the people on lifetime memberships, 50% of the people are paying um, somewhere between, depending on when they got in, $109 to 197 bucks a month. So that's kind of the context to give you guys like where I'm going with this. Now, we're coming into the end of the year and I went to, well, might as well, it's Sunday night, so I'll give you a little bit more story here if you're rocking with me right now. So I went to church about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. I've been more recent than that, but there was a specific incident and, and, I, and I went to this church called um, The Rock here in San Diego. Now, The Rock is not a normal church when you think of like, just like, I don't know, like a small ass church you walk into, you kneel down at a pew, like that's a traditional Catholic church, but it's this Christian church and when you walk in, I'm not kidding, there's thousands of people. And when you go in, the energy is fucking second to none. It's like, you look around and everyone's fucking singing and everyone's very warm to each other. The lights, the production, like you just feel, you feel the power in the proximity. And I said, holy shit, this is fucking great. And then I looked at religion and then I looked at entrepreneurship. Now granted, they're very different things, but at the same time, an entrepreneur is all bought in. Someone who's truly religious or in a relationship with God, they're all in on that. You never turn it off. However, for religion, there's multiple times a week, at least once a week, where people are getting together, talking about their faith, finding ways to strengthen it, go on mission trips, etc. Then you take entrepreneurship, people are just dedicated to being an entrepreneur, but yet we're only meeting up like three times a year at so-and-so's event for two to three days maximum. And I just said, what the fuck? Why isn't there something that people can come to on a more regular basis to feel that type of proximity, to feel that type of energy, to feel that closeness, that support? And by the way, entrepreneurship is the loneliest sport in the world. So when you can actually create something where people can come, it's like, it feels home. So from that moment on, I came in, I told the team this, and I said, we're building a studio. I want instead of just going online and pressing a camera like I'm talking to you guys now, like I'm sure some of you feel connected to me right now and you feel what I'm saying, but imagine if I was having this conversation with you within arm's length, I could touch you, I could reach you, you could touch me, you can see me, you can feel me. There's just a level of, and would you guys agree? Let me ask you guys, Sarah, I got you here. Why don't you give me some feedback? Do you guys agree with me in regards to just like the connection? If, if this right now moment was the exact moment was happening in person in an intimate theater, like it just levels up 
the experience, period. So we went on this on this journey to create, you know, Genius Studios. And when I tell you it's a fucking journey, I don't want to go too sidetracked, but it is because the amount of capital it takes to actually build out an infrastructure, um, the the managing of a construction project and the budgeting and, and things like that, it's it was it was a giant learning curve. I would never advise anybody to go in um, without doing some consulting or having somebody oversee the project. But anyways, it was a learning curve. But nonetheless, here we are. And now I'm happy to say, and I'm looking at the comments, 100%, like someone said, those be long arms. I'm in New York. I see you. Um, and you guys, you guys feel me. Uh, someone says not really, but then I would challenge you to say, go to somewhere in person and see if the connection's the same. I know when I go to Mastermind and stuff, it's, it's not a comparison. Um, or if you're going to the events, that means you may not be participating. You're the person with your arms folded, sitting in the back. So you're getting out exactly what you're putting in. So anyways, when done right, when executed right, I do not believe there is a comparison. It doesn't mean you can't make a connection from here. Again, my whole life was founded on it, but it's just, it's not the same. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm looking at, I have security cameras like all in our office and stuff so I can see. And I will, uh, uh, and uh, I will tell you guys um, that we are now like, I think two and a half uh, weeks away or three weeks away from actually opening the uh, Genius Studios. Woo! Which is a big deal. Um, and uh, with that, I was like, well, you know what? Um, I was, I was, I was like, who's the audience? Whenever you, you know, do anything in business, you ask yourself, who's the audience? Who is this for? And as we as a company set our visions higher outside of just like this entrepreneurial world, um, we said, you know what, like when we launch this thing, we don't want to just promote it to like the typical digital marketing community that you would see. I said, we want to go after traditional school. So what you're going to see from us as a company is a series of videos, a series of messages going directly after the college curriculum. I don't, I'm not a hater of college, but the curriculum, in other words, what they're teaching in college, I think is the most dangerous thing. One of the most dangerous things that our country is facing right now, to the point where we're going all out, we're putting billboards in front of like some of the most quote unquote prestigious business schools in the world. And like, we're taking shots. So there's this big rollout you'll see from our company over the next 18 months uh, to push this thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, anyways, that's what we're doing. That's what's happening and uh, I'm excited for it. So right now what I'm going to do live is I'm gonna write some uh, ad copy here. Uh, Nick, fuck you. Nick's here, we're playing each other in fantasy football and I'm having a horrible week. I hate you. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna write some ad copy. So how many of you here, scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself um, in regards to ad copy? Meaning your ability to write persuasively to get somebody to take action. Your ability to write persuasively to get somebody to take action, to buy your stuff, to, to meet up in person, to whatever the fuck it is. Scale of one to 10. Let me get a feel. Let me get a feel for you guys here. All right. Uh, we got a six. Chris says about a six. And you guys got a little delay from me here too. Isaiah is about a seven. Dustin says about a seven. Um, a three, a five, a zero. That's okay. Thank you for being honest. I appreciate that. Um, I will tell you guys this, a 10 that he says, Alicia says she's an eight, uh, Desmond a four, Justin a zero, and um, Yesenia a 10, Justin says a zero. Now, let me be real with you guys. It's okay with whatever three, seven, four, one, okay. It's okay with whatever number you say, but I will tell you this, the ability to write persuasively in regards to 2018 and having a company, I'm going to say it's probably the, if not number one, it's the top, it's within the top three skills of what you need to succeed here. And it's something that I do believe as the entrepreneur, you can look here and say, well, Billy, why don't I just go get a copywriter? And for some businesses, depending on what size you are, how much budget you have, how much cash flow, but for our audience, the 95% of small business owners who never will make it to the million dollars mark or haven't made it to the million dollar mark yet, let me tell you something. If you don't know how to write persuasively, you're gonna go out of business. So I'm gonna kind of give you, um, like, I'm gonna talk out loud. I'm not gonna go with like any like specific formula. I got a whole bunch of those worksheets and trainings like available, like a lot of them are for free, but I'm gonna kind of tell you how I write at like a high level. And then that way you guys can kind of sit here with me and 
experience the journey. I wish I could fucking share my screen so I can show you this, um, but I don't know if I'll be able to. All right, so let me move this. But I will, I'll talk you guys through it regardless. So I would take out notes if any of you really want to go into town on this with me. Does anybody want to see this? Is this even of interest to you guys? Like how the ad copy is written or, or brought to life or any of that stuff? All right. And what I can do is I can post it in the comments too as I type stuff so you can actually see what I'm writing. Um, so yeah, I'll give you guys a little segments. Let me know in the comments. Is that helpful? Or give it a like. Give it a like if you think it's helpful. Go ahead and Give me a like so I can see that. Perfect. I'm not using Wirecast right now, so I don't have that. Hi, Christina Nelson. She's fucking fantastic. Um, you know what's funny is I have Wirecast on this computer, too, and I'm not using I haven't used this computer in a minute. Okay. Good. Right now. Is this live right now? Yeah, this is 100% live. I'm, I'm here, and what time is it? I don't even know. 7.30 Pacific Standard Time on September 16, 2018. So this is uh, as real as it gets, all right? What ad copy books do you recommend? Um, Joanna Wee, I believe is how you say her last name, copyhackers.com. Anything that she's put together, I would say is going to be top shelf um, in regards to resources for training. Okay. All right, here we go. So first thing that you do is you establish who you're writing to, right? Um, and the reason why you do that is because it dramatically changes how you speak. So for example, the way that you speak to um, like your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you may say like, hey, baby, love you. Or like, hey, pookie boo boo. Like, hey, how you doing? Hey, honey bunches of oats. Or like, hey, like you may have these nicknames, right? So you speak one way to them. Now at the same time, if you don't know a woman at all, you won't go up to the grocery store and say, hey, honey bunches of oats. Like, how are you doing today? Like that would be some weird shit. You'd be like a stalker. So temperature, we call that temperature. You gotta check the temperature of your relationship with the person that you're writing to. So strategically, you got to figure out where's your profit going to come from. Now, usually when it comes to reaching a large audience for a promotion, um, your profit, usually the more you have to educate someone, typically the more expensive it is. So where the profit comes from is from the people who are already on the fence, but they just haven't been swayed one way or the other. So for example, the thing that I'm doing here, and again, I'll type this in so you guys can be with me, is I'm gonna talk about audience. I'll type this in there. And then I'll just put like hyphen opportunity. And then the easiest way, actually I'll ask you guys, if you've been listening to this talk from the beginning, where's where's my profit right now? Where's the easiest, easiest first place that I wanna start selling uh, to right now? So again, let me start with the promotion, the offer, and let you know what it is. It's the last time to get a lifetime membership to Billie Jean's Gene Pool until the grand opening, which is on October 16th, I think, 16th. So it's pretty much, they get exactly 30 days, 30 days to become a lifetime member of Billie Jean's Gene Pool or they're gonna miss it and we're gonna close it indefinitely, right? So that's kind of what the objective is. So let me actually start there. I will type that in the chat for you guys, hold up easiest thing for you objective uh, sell lifetime memberships to the gene pool okay there i just typed in the chat so you guys can kind of keep up with me and see where i'm at audience someone says the email list is going to be the best way now remember this we have current members in the gene pool around 5,000, okay? And remember 50% of those on lifetime that already have taken this deal, it's 2,500 of them, okay? The other uh, members that are just paying monthly, there's 2,500 of them, okay? And then in addition to this, we have about on our email list, people who have opted in to something we've done before, 300,000. And then people we have pixeled, meaning they've watched one of our videos before that we can retarget to them. So I'll say pixeled audience is what we'll call that. Pixeled audience. Uh, we have millions of those. I don't know. I have to ask the marketing team what's the exact number there. It's millions. Then the other audiences that we have is page likers, we'll call them. About 64,000 on Facebook, on Instagram. Follows, we got about 55,000 there, and then we got YouTube where we got about 35,000 subscribers there, 
and then text messages. I mean, text messages mean amount of phone numbers we can text message. We got about a hundred thousand there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'm typing this in so you guys can keep up with me here. Are you guys seeing this in the chat? Go ahead and like it. When I type something, like it just so I know that you guys are receiving it at the same time. Because again, usually I share my screen, so I'm used to that. I don't have that option right now. Okay. Good. When I see the likes coming in, I know you you see me. Okay. All right, there you go. Anyways, that's the potential audience. So again, before I start writing a fucking thing in regards to how am I going to relate to these people, first thing I had to do was identify my objective. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to sell lifetime gene pool memberships. There's only a 30 day deadline and then the opportunity is gone. Okay. Then the second thing is I got to figure out who the fuck am I selling this to? So the first thing I did is I just identified like, all right, well, who should I even target? Who can I reach? And by the way, right now, as a small business owner, if you're looking at this and you say, well, Billy, this is easy for you to do because you have X, Y, and Z. Let me tell you something. The, what will create the most stress for you as an entrepreneur is not having any distribution. And what I mean by that is the ability to make offers to people on demand. Like right now, I click a button, I go live, and there's 120 of you guys here, and I can sell you something. That gives me peace of mind to make offers. The fact I can email 300,000 people. So that's why you guys have to start building up these assets. This doesn't come overnight. This comes of spending millions of bucks and freaking staying this stuff religiously for like the last seven years, right? So don't get discouraged, but realize you do got to start, okay? That's a side note. So once I kind of understand this shit, and I say, all right, um, here's my potential audience for this. And then there's also cold traffic. The thing is I'm gonna realize for the sake of profitability, for an offer like this, I'm not gonna focus my attention on cold people, meaning people who have just never heard of us before. The reason is because to show them enough content to get them to take a make a decision is gonna be costly and it really won't be that profitable for us as a company to do that much education relative to the offer. And so I don't want to put my effort there, especially if I only have 30 days or 25 days to promote this. Like, it's just not a good use of time. So I want to focus my energy on the lowest hanging fruit first. The lowest hanging fruit in this particular case is what? Based off the numbers I gave you guys in the comments right there, what is the easiest opportunity for me to make this profitable with this offer? Last chance to get a lifetime membership to Billie Jean's gene pool. Okay. Where's that? When you see the numbers, what's the opportunity? What's the opportunity? By the way, I'm not like shaving or cutting my hair until my event on October 5th. So I fucking look like a savage right now. So don't hate. Uh, Robert DeFrancisco says monthly buyers and you are 100% right. So the people that are most likely to buy are the people who have already had the most of the experience. The most of the experience. Meaning, dude, I already got fucking 2,500 people who are paying monthly for the thing, they might as well do lifetime and save money because if they've had a decent experience and they're gonna stay, it's it's a no brainer. It's logically, it makes sense, emotionally it makes sense. And it requires not that much education because they've already been to our trainings, have access to the database of trainings so they know what it is. So my hottest opportunity, hottest opportunity is going to be to monthly members, okay? Now, for those people, the biggest challenge that I'm going to run into or that I need to make sure that we do is I got to make sure we actually notify them. So the next way that my brain works here before we even going to ad copy is, OK, for those people who are that hot, like and to me, the, the offer makes so much sense. I want to go all in on them. So what I think about when I see monthly members is, OK, next is what information do I have or what ways can I reach out to them? And I have all their phone numbers. I have their addresses. Um, I got their phone numbers. I got their addresses. Uh, we have them in a group groups. Uh, I have them in uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. A lot of them do follow us. Right. So Facebook, YT, IG. Now, this is a point where I say, you know what, typically direct mail, I'd be like, nah, it's probably not going to be worth the cost. In this case, direct mail makes sense because we send out monthly keys to a lot of these members where they're already receiving stuff from us in the mail. So we've trained an audience to actually be excited about getting stuff from us in the mail. Also too, they understand who it's from and we already have a relationship. So a great way to get in front of these people is going to be to do a direct mail campaign. So on my notes over here, the way that I want to get a hold of them is I definitely want to go direct mail, okay? 
I have them on live calls on Tuesday, so I'll make the announcement on my live calls on Tuesdays, okay? And then from now until the offer ends, I'm gonna get that opportunity four different times. Got it? Okay, so I got direct mail, live calls on Tuesdays to get a hold of them. We got our private Facebook group. I'll definitely hit them there, and then I got my text messages. Cool, all right? Now, when I look at this, because to sell to these people, it, it's probably not gonna take a ton. It's more just making them aware and making sure they're engaged. Now I'll start to delegate this to like my team. So I will give to our Gene Pool marketing team, I will assign them each one of these things, like the direct mail and stuff like this. So, and this is just, I'm actually working right now. So if I'm, if I suck at engaging sometimes, it's cause I actually gotta do this shit too. So I know tomorrow I need to assign this out to some people on the team so that it happens. And for something like that, I won't be super heavily involved in the ad copy because um, it doesn't take as much finesse. It really doesn't. They're already bought in. They come to the trainings, right? I can make the live offers on Tuesdays. But right there, I would have Rena, our CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, I will assign her to do that, okay? And then I will also have Rhea, because Rhea handles a lot of the things that come with fulfillment and direct mail, team up with her on the direct mail side to make sure that message is good. I will have final approval on both of those and make sure that it's everything that we want it to be. All right, cool. So that's what I'm looking at here, Billy Jean, final approval. Good, okay. Now, the other thing that I wanna look at, now that I kind of understand the objective of what I'm doing, I'm kind of figuring out where's my most profitable opportunities first. Um, then I kind of assign it to them, then I identify in my head, like, okay, who on the team is actually gonna execute these things? All right, I got Rena on the ad copy to that. I got Ray on the actual fulfillment side, making sure there. I'll get Nicole on the design. Design the direct mail piece. All right. Um, probably have, and then Rena also bust out a landing page for it. Good. All right, cool. So now I know how I'm going to attack the hottest attack, like it's fucking war. Oh, we're in attack. Um, the hottest leads, but the bigger opportunity in regards to volume with this is that next level. And that's our email list, right? The people who have been pixeled who have watched our videos before, um, the people who like our page, you know, all those things. And I say, well, shit, how can I how can I really push these people over the fence? What can I do to really get them to want to invest into us? And a couple of those things is now the next thing I want to do, and I'll type this in the chat, is I'll identify the incentives that I have because a lot of these people have seen that for before, but they didn't take it for one reason or the other. So that means we as a company did a poor job of demonstrating the value and we just need to find a better way to do it. So I think to myself, well, what's the biggest thing? What's the reason? Like whenever you want to re-engage a, a lead that never bought, uh, a strong way to come at them is with new information. You know, hey, you said no to this, but did you also know blank? And so the biggest incentive or the new information in this case is the fact that our fucking studio is like two weeks from being done. Studio. Um, so they're going to have the opportunity to come in person. Um, also, too, our guest list of people who are going to be teaching in the gene pool is fucking world class. So guest list is another incentive. Um, also too, time is going to be another incentive for them to take action because after this, it goes away. So it's kind of, I'll say last shot is another one. Uh, the other thing that I take into account is, is this, maybe you guys can help me here. I like your opinion on this. So whenever you're running promotions, especially if you're running an extended promotion for like X period of time, here's what happens. This is the site. Uh, God, I wish I could draw for you guys so bad. Uh, but here's what happens. Um, if you have a, a, a promotion that's going to last any amount of time, all of your sales, or at least majority of your sales, come, number one, at the beginning of the promotion, well, right when you announce it, right? That's where all the excitement is and shit like that. And then the second part of your sales come from the ending. Like, human beings are the worst. We procrastinate for everything. So me, as an entrepreneur, though, I don't want to have to wait you know, till the 28th day to get a big spike of our sales. And I don't want to just do this 
you know, in the beginning where it goes well, and then the middle is just kind of like waves off. So I asked myself, and this is kind of the hardest part about the promotion. Why now? Why now? Why does someone need to buy and take advantage of this now? So then the next thing I think about is um, a toolbox. What are different promotions that companies use outside of digital marketing or digital marketing to get people to take action now and not procrastinate? So one example of that is bonus stacking. Hey, if you buy by this date, I'm also going to give you bam, bam, and bam. Hey, if you buy by this date, I'm also going to give you bam, bam, and bam. So you kind of have this wave. Next thing they do is a price increase. Um, hey, by this date, the price is going to increase for a lifetime membership here. The price is going to increase. The price is going to increase. The price is going to increase. But, you know, all these things have pros and cons to them. But anyways, there's just a whole bunch of toolboxes that are going through my head. But I don't want to say them all. Like, I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you're just tuning in, um, what we're talking about here is lifetime memberships to the gene pool. I teach, you know, every single week, um, and bring some of the smartest guests in the world to teach uh, live in our studio here in San Diego. And, uh, we broadcast to the world and it's fucking amazing. And it's great. We've been doing it for years and we're about to take it up to a whole different level. So that's what we're offering here because the lifetime memberships that we've been offering, we're not doing anymore as soon as the grand opening of our studio happens. So that's what we're doing is we're promoting that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you guys think? What, what have been some of the, your favorite ways that either you as a company or other companies or entrepreneurs you've seen have created urgency with an offer to get people to take action immediately? Um, Brandy Grant says bonus stacking. I love it. Um, I appreciate you. Says Gene Paul such a great. And I'm typing in the chat there too. Um, and send to the studio in person, guest list, last time, last shot. So this, and this is kind of the hard part. And this is where as a company, we're like, shit, we got to make sure we know the urgency. And then it's like, okay, if I'm going to go ahead and um, say like you get a bonus if you buy early, well, now you have to add in like product services features to do that. So now you got to get creative. I'm like, okay, what do you offer? And then you got to make sure that like the excitement's not gone by the time you do that the third time to the point where nobody wants to take the offer. There's just so much shit to this, right? So this is like a writer's cramp from taking notes. Uh, scarcity, a countdown clock, right? Um, bonuses, limited number, okay? So that's definitely an option, right? Where you go, hey, you know what? It's closing down on this date, but I'm gonna make this clear. There's only going to be another 500 lifetime members. So I could, I could pick a number, right? So then you run into the next challenge, right? Let's say I pick a number and let's just roll with that for the sake of this training and I'm live. All right, let's say we do 500. Well, now you get the instance of, well, shit, uh, there's 500. I got plenty of time. They didn't sell 500 yet. But then if you say there's 50, you're like, shit, they're going to sell at 50 fast. And then you have an, I, you know, a, a challenge of like, well, shit, what do we do now? We just sold 50 and we still want to sell more, right? So then you got to kind of pick what's the number that you actually use for the urgency. Um, so this is bonus stack, a one-on-one -on -one or a ticket to an event. So then you got to look at like, Raul, like the, if you, if you stack a one-on-one -on -one, now, how much is that costing you? Right? So if I said a one-on-one, -on -one, well, first of all, we'll probably have like a thousand people take this offer. So, if I, so if I fucking stack a one-on-one, -on -one, like <laughs> I'll never work. Like that will be my full-time job for the rest of my life. It's just calling people this, right? So you got to make sure it's scalable in that way. Today only is definitely something you can do. The challenge is to reach everyone. The amount of people we want to reach, we will not only meet them, reach them in a day. So that's another thing. Um, let's see. Robert says, I know you don't like this, but 30 money, 30 day money back guarantee. How about a seven day free look? I signed up for whatever on the fence. Yo, let me tell you guys, absolutely not. It tracks the wrong type of customer. If someone like you gotta understand where we're as a company, right? So like we're in a position where the guests that we've had like come by the studio and the gene pool is like your Damon Johns, your freaking Grant Cardone's and the fucking, you know, from your Lewis House and my guy Cody the Clever Investor. It's, I mean, the fucking list just goes on. Dominic Cruz, fucking UFC legend. Uh, one of my closest friends, like JoJo, you know, pop icon. Like, dude, we, we have we have more credibility and tests have been on every fucking stage. We're not the stage of like, I'm going to do a trial. And remember, we're going to warm audience too. So this isn't people who just see this for the first time where you may need to do those things. What you get when is exactly what I talked about in the beginning. If I go, hey, yeah, yeah, 30 day money back guarantee. When people psychologically sign up for, matter of fact, I'll ask you guys. And if you can reply back, that would be helpful for the sake of this thing here. Um, when you guys hear, 
when you guys hear a free, uh, like a trial, a trial of anything in life, um, when you come into that, when you're taking a trial, what are some thoughts that are going through your head? What are some thoughts when someone says, I'll take a trial, a trial, what are some thoughts? How do you approach that thing that you're trying? There you go. How do you approach that thing? No, even better. What percentage of effort do you give to something that you're trying? What percentage of effort do you give to something that you're trying? What percentage, you can put numeric value, what percentage of effort do you give to something that you're trying? What percentage? Give me a number in the chat. What percentage of effort? Other people say that for the mentality I'm gonna counsel, 30 days is already on their way out, not valuable, I can counsel. A trial is about testing the service, counsel diminishes the value, someone says, not much. Um, let's see, uh, exit strategy, money back, right? The thought of counseling is quitting is always in the back of your head, exactly. It doesn't leave, it doesn't leave. When you know you can quit, you're always like, ah, yeah. Here's the difference. When people are on a, on a trial, they say, should I do it or should I not do it? When people think they're stuck in something, they say, how can I make this work? It's the difference between dating and marriage, not all the time, but for the sake of this example. When you're dating somebody, you're trying it. Yeah, we're gonna try it out, see if it works, see if it makes sense, maybe get married. When you're married, like, fuck it, we're already married, let's figure it out, because I don't wanna deal with it, we're gonna figure it out, right? That's the difference. So I don't want people to come into our shit when, you know, I know the value that we provide and we have fucking a ton of reviews, et cetera, to come in on some fucking trial shit, right? It's the same thing of, like I said in the beginning with the pool. Right now, if you guys had to go outside in the pool, you know it's cold wherever you are. Let's say you knew the water was cold. If you go up to it and you say, well, let me feel it first, and you put your thumb in it, and you put your toe, your big toe in it, what's your chances of retreating? High. Fuck this shit. This is way too cold. I'm not jumping into this water. But if you're like, are we going to do it? Fuck it. Should we do it? Cannonball! Boom. You go all in. The first thing that everybody says is, eh, it's not that bad. Swim, 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 and you have a great time. Right? That's a fucking trial. Fuck a trial. Fuck a trial. I'm hardcore against a trial. Hardcore against um, money back. Like, fuck that. I'm, we're not. That's not us. They can go They can go to, like, these little, like, one-off courses and stuff. Like, what we're building is, by the, by the way, by the way, um, did anybody uh, get a refund from their uh, university? Anybody go to college and get a refund for your shit? Anybody? I'll wait. Oh, you didn't? Okay, then. See what I'm saying? So anyways, uh, you guys should note that. And let's continue on to the ad copy. I got something in my mouth. What the fuck is that? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go down to the ad copy now. We're going to start writing, and I'll start typing these in as we go. So now I know what I want to sell. It's a lifetime membership to the gene pool. And I know who I want to sell it to, like who I really want to reach with this. It's the people who have seen our stuff, which means, you know, Billy Jean is marketing. They may, they may have heard of one of our programs or two of our programs, nah, but uh, nonetheless, they haven't been sold. So the very first thing that I want to do as I'm starting to write is I want to know what I'm selling them. Okay. So clarity okay clarity what am i actually selling them all right now the gene pool is education right education it's empowerment it's giving people skills okay now those are the tools to get them there but the truth is when people invest into the gene pool obviously like some people think we're great and shit but the one thing that they want is what what's the real reason why somebody is joining the gene pool, which is what I teach, right? What's the real reason? It's one word. It's one word. It's one word. Someone says, how's the how's the 40 pound weight loss challenge? I'm down 25, like 27 pounds right now. So yeah, and I got and I got a lot of time. So um, and I'm sharing that on live because I like I want to just do a reveal at the end and be like, wow, but yeah, so. That's part of the reason why I'm not shaving or cutting my hair either, is I just want to like come and like hit the goal weight and then do it. Actually, that'd be fun. Um, someone says the real reason why someone is doing it is they want to own a home, they want to get results, they want to build their business. Um, what's up, Mike? They want to, they want leads, they want results, they want value. Like, see, this is why we do this exercise. My boy Gabe, shout out to Gabe. 
uh, says they want skill. Dude, you guys know why people join the gene pool? All of you, some of you here are members of the gene pool? Because you want one word. What is it really? What is it really? Come on now. Somebody get this. Looney got it. Looney got it. Alex got it too. You want fucking money. You want money. Okay? You want money. Okay? So that's the want. What is the honest? They want money. Right? They want the ability to create money. They want money. Is that true? Yes or no? Put it in the chat right now. Just so I know if you're with me. Yes or no? Why people invest into it, right? You're learning about business stuff. You're learning about digital marketing and all this so you can get more cups, so you can get more money. Money, right? That's the thing. Now, there's reasons why you want the money, which we'll get into. But you want money, right? You want money, and that's the, yeah, we'll, we'll go into the layers, right? So, but a simplistic version, before I write the ad copy, I understand these things. I say, okay, um, I want money. Then I also, too, realize that in any sales pitch, especially online, there's only one reason why people don't buy from you. There's only one reason why people don't buy from you. Anybody know what that is? Only one reason why people don't buy from you. Why? Why? Why don't people buy from you? Because there's only one reason. Why? Put it in the chisel. Put it in the chisel. Okay? Put it in the chat. What's the reason? There it is. Two people got it. Same time. Reason they don't buy is because they don't trust you. They don't trust you. It's simple. And you have to think about this. If people believed that your product or service, and when I say believe, with a thousand percent certainty, a thousand percent certainty, if they believed that your product or service was going to get them what they wanted, whatever that may be, was, was going to get them what they wanted, you would close 100% of sales, your sales. Assuming that actually, even if they couldn't afford it, they'd find a way to afford it. A thousand percent certainty. For example, if everybody wants a six pack, we brought up the weight loss challenge shit, right? Like if I knew there was something out there with a thousand percent certainty that I could just fucking like, you know, like buy, like people would fucking buy it all day, right? Like the only reason why people wouldn't enroll into the gene pool is they just don't believe that it's going to work with a thousand percent certainty. They can't say that. So I'm noting all of this and walking through this process with you guys because when I write, you're going to see me attack that trust. I'm going to go all in on building trust, okay, um, within the ad copy. And that's what we're about to dive into. So they want money. The last thing I need to realize is why? Why? Why do they want money? Why do they want money? Why? And this is where you really get to like the core of the stuff, what the writing should be about. Why? Why do the people want money? Okay. Why? Freedom. Sure. Okay. This is level one. We'll call it why level one. Why level one? So they want freedom. Why not? Put that as number one here. I'll send you guys my notes so you can see like my sporadic brain at work. Uh, freedom is one. What else? Um, let's see. Quality of life. Okay, sure. Why not? We'll put it for now. This is good level one stuff. Quality of life. All right. What else? Hi, Carrie Nelson. Shout out to Carrie Nelson. Um, they want certainty. All right. Whatever. Sure. Why not? Okay. They want options. Okay, cool, good. What do they want is what we're talking about, why? So we said money is the ultimate one. When people invest into the gene pool or educational services in this case, they want money. That's what they're hoping to get, right? And if they can guarantee that and they knew a thousand percent certainty that they'd make more money as a result of investing money, they do it every single time. But then to get them to actually take action and create emotion, we have to understand why they want money. And your guys' reasons are freedom, quality of life, certainty, um, options, uh, less stress, less stress. Okay. Now watch this. This is exactly how ad copy goes. And I'll just, I'm going to put these notes in for you guys. Hold on here. Let's see. We need clarity. Why your product or service 
we'll get them what they want. In this case, that's money. All right, here, I'm just going to brainstorm or copy and paste this to you guys really quick. Um, also, too, oh, shit. Also, too, side notes. Um, yeah, that's cool. Side note, scale of 1 to 10, is this helpful to go through this? Side note, is this helpful? Scale of 1 to 10. 10 being really helpful, 1, not so much. That's fine, too. Um, but 10, like, cool to just go through this process with you guys. Because anybody can do this. You can recreate this for your business anytime. It just takes practice. Just go through a lot. Um, all right. Good? Good. Okay. I'm glad it's helping some people. All right. Now, here's what usually happens. And this is usually the biggest mistake, okay? So most people will get in their thoughts before they start writing. They'll think about these things. You know, they'll say, okay. Well, people want to invest this because they want to make more money. So some people will put in an ad like this. Hey, want to make more money? Click here and I'll show you how. Insert picture standing in front of private jet. That's usually what the ad copy says. Yeah, I wish you guys can see my screen too, but I'm going to type in the chat as much as as much as I can. All right. So there you go. That's usually what the ad copy sounds like. That's bad ad copy. This is what 90% of people do, but it's shitty. If you think that's bad ad copy, then go ahead and like the comment I did, just so I know you guys are with me. Go ahead and like that. If you agree that that is just shitty ad copy, then go ahead. But also, too, admit it. Let me know. You see that stuff all the way around. Now, there's a, a second layer here. And other people who think they're doing their thing, it sounds like this. Hey, are you sick of your nine to five and want more freedom to and choices in your life? Aren't you tired of being stressed all the time? Click here and I'll show you um, blank, blank, and blank, okay? So there's the next layer of what people will do. So they kind of get away from just like, hey, you're making more money because one, most of the social networks will just ban your shit for saying that. Um, and then two, they go into this shit and they just plug and play these kind of buzzwords that you see happening fucking everywhere, right? Like buzzwords, freedom, choices. These are the things that I, I call them buzzwords because this is not actually how people like receive information and take action. And then let's take a step back, okay? And I'm going to read you guys an example of some ad, of an ad that I just wrote recently. Okay. I just wrote it, I think last week. And uh, I want you to see how it's different than what we just did there. And you tell me if you like it or not. And you tell me if it's easy to connect. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe you don't like it. Okay. It's working really well for us. So ultimately there is a scoreboard with these things, but I am going to read to you guys exactly what the fuck this is, so you can see it. And I want your opinion on it, okay? So here we go. All right. So my ears keep popping. I'm stretching out. Right, here we go. It says, stop scrolling. I buried a million dollars, and I'm about to tell you exactly where it's at. It's in Wilbur. Go get it. If you're like most logical humans, the first thing you would do is, number one, ask more questions like, where's Wilbur? Like, where is it in Wilbur? Number two, Google, what the fuck is Wilbur and how do I get there? Three, follow step-by-step -step directions that Google Maps or Waze gives you. Here's what most logical entrepreneurs do when trying to scale their business. Number one, get in the car. Two, start driving. Three, hope they get rich. When they don't reach their destination, they ask their friends or family who've never been there how to get there, post pictures on Instagram pretending they're there, tell everyone it doesn't exist or it's impossible to get to, turn into a troll on social media, and post negative stuff on ads like this. The 4% of businesses that actually scale to seven figures and beyond take the exact same step. Learn from someone who's been there 
that can give you the directions because they're smart and they don't like wasting their time and money. When you actually follow the directions, it's amazing what can happen. Let me show you. Here's a breakdown of what I spent in the last few years on mentorship for myself and my team. 2009 to 2014, it was less than 10 grand, unless you count the 200K my parents lost on my college degree that I never finished. 2015, it was 10,000 bucks. 16, 17,000 bucks. 17, 80 grand. 2018, 92,000 bucks. Total of $210,000. Ridiculous. It's a big tap, but I wanna show you something else. In the last few years, look at the impact it's had on our growth. 2009 to 2014, somewhere between not enough and not that much, but 2015, a million bucks. 2016, four million bucks. 2017, six million bucks. And 2018, on track to hit 10 million bucks. That's a total of $21 million. Not exact figures, but close enough and you get the point. Was coaching, mentoring, and attending events all worth it? Well. It depends if you like 20 million bucks return on your investment. Side note, most of that's not profit and Uncle Sam's a greedy, greedy man. So why am I telling you this? Because I want to lock you in a room and give it to you for eight hours straight, maybe one or two breaks. I'm also going to bring seven of my friends to help. Want it? Before you answer that question, let me show you who's going to give it to you with me. Ryan Steumann, the hardcore closer, six-time best-selling author, creator of, the, creator of the largest sales group on Facebook and the king of sales. Cody Sperber, the clever investor, one of the most successful real estate investors and leading educators in the world. Cole Hatter, speaker and creator of Thrive, Make Money Matter. He's generated more sales from stays than almost anyone on the planet. Bezos Koulian, author, speaker, and founder of Fit Body Bootcamp, one of the world's fastest growing franchises. Sue B. Zimmerman, Instagram expert, social media educator, and business coach. Drew Canoli, founder of Organifi, a multi eight figure business, Fit Life TV, and America's number one transformation coach. Timothy Sykes, self-made multimillionaire, stock trader, and entrepreneur, over 1 million followers on Instagram, has been featured on TV shows like Steve Harvey. What are we going to give you? The blueprint, the directions, and the roadmap to success so you can stop driving around in circles. Where is it all going down? At the Music Box in Little Italy, San Diego, one of the sickest venues on the planet, usually reserved for world-class musicians and artists. Who is going to be in attendance at this event? The School of Genius Summit some of the best marketing geniuses and entrepreneurs from around the world. How can you get tickets to this underground soiree? Click here to apply. PS Full Transparency, this event's not for everyone and it's expensive, but not as expensive as the gas, car accidents, flat tires, battery replacement, frustration, and time loss from trying to figure out entrepreneurship on your own. Click here to apply. I hope to see you there. It's the only logical decision. Billy Jean. So, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> it's a little different. You see what I'm saying? I'll kind of like break down, like how do you get to like story-based shit like that? How do you get to where it's fun to, to read and, and fun to, you know, explore and, and things of such, you know? Um, there was a lot of te techniques um, used there. Uh, one was the fact that the whole thing was pretty much an analogy, right? Um, not everybody can wrap their head around getting mentors or coaches, but everybody can wrap their head around driving and getting lost. So identifying something that the audience could relate to is really what made that thing flow. Um, and um, so that was step one. Uh, secondly, uh, once I kind of told the story, I also validated the theory by sharing my own personal story now, the second that I go into someone else's personal story, now you run into like claims and everything else with like, uh, you know, Facebook and all that shit and your ads likely to get rejected. Um, and so we focus on ours because we know we can verify our shit and back it up and that's cool. Um, next is you saw that I brought in the speakers, but as opposed to just saying, come to my event to look who's speaking here, uh, I brought it up in a fun way that was kind of a little shocking a little like what the hell is going on, but that was the point of it, to keep them reading and to get them excited. Um, and then we gave them the details of the event and it was just done in a different way. Now, if I'm going to sell people on coming to um, a marketing training or entrepreneurial training, shouldn't I be demonstrating excellence in my ad copy? If my ad was shitty, then you know damn well my event's probably gonna be shitty too, or at least the information that you're learning there. So it was important that this was world-class copy, okay? so. As I kind of set the frame, someone said I read that copy this morning. I love it. Um, it takes talent. You know, it, it does take talent, but also to you guys, um, is there anything I'm not good at? Yeah, everything outside of sales, marketing, and video games. 
you know, everything outside of that, I'm not good at, you know, I'm trying to get good at this dad thing. Uh, but you know, outside of that, uh, no, I'm, I'm not good at anything. So, uh, but anyways, you guys want me to copy and paste that copy to you guys. So you have it, so you can pick it apart. Let me know in the chat. You guys got a little bit of delay. Um, but let me know. I can copy and paste that to you guys. If you want it, you don't have to take it, but at least you have it there for yourself and you can kind of see that. Just let me know. Let me know in the chat, please, if you want it, and I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Um, and then there's just an image of like myself and the speakers. Nothing really crazy there. Uh, Marlon says, I just paid for the lifetime membership to get rid of it now. Yo, you're good, player. You have it now. Good job. You didn't miss it. It's for the people that are trying to come in on some late shit that won't get it. So you, you're locked in, player. All right. I just put it in. Uh, tag myself. There you go. Also, too, kills the notion that people don't read long ad copy um, because it's they do. They just don't read boring stuff. Um, and that's the reason why I continuously in this ad copy, I use humor because humor is a great way to wake people up. And remember, they go on social media to be entertained. So like adding those humor elements, you're like, well, that's just Billy's personality. Sure, it is. But it's also necessary to keep your attention, especially in a world with one line punchlines of clickbait. You know what I mean? And I'm actually have some meat here. Like, so just as much as I'm trying to give information, I got to remember, I got to keep advancing the story and keep the laughs coming. So now after all of this, right, this is all the things I do before even writing the ad copy. Now I can finally start to put my head in a place where I can really start to reach people. Okay. So, um, you guys get that? Can you like the copy? If you see it in there, just make sure you guys see it. Just go ahead. Like I copied it in there. Just hit the like button underneath it. Okay. Um, and, uh, all right, so now let me circle back and I'll start working the different segments of this with you guys. So the first thing, and this kind of part takes time and I'll freestyle it with you guys here. I'm kind of gonna speak out loud, but I wanna, I wanna pique curiosity. And I also too want to create an enemy in this particular ad copy. Because what we're creating with Genius Studios and the Gene Pool is, as a company, we don't want to be compared to any internet marketing course or any digital marketer out there. We're, we're thinking so much beyond that. For us, it's the conversation of you go to Billie Jean Gene Pool as opposed to going to get your master's degree from a Stanford, Harvard, Yale. Now, some of you are like, wow, that sounds pretty far-fetched. But does it? I want you to think about something. When you enroll into college there at one of those schools, the classes that you take, such as like advanced corporate finance or all of these things, for a small business owner, there is nothing there that is going to freaking get you your customers right now, get your name out there and start your business. To that 95% of business owners that make up the economy, right? Like, yo, that's, that's not going to cut it. And so, and the way that college is structured, they're getting their information on like a semester basis. So for example, how many of you have ever done something on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and then all of a sudden it either stopped working or went away? How many of you have experienced that? Let me know in the chat. It's either stopped working or went away. Now think about this, where we have a format where I'm teaching new shit every week and a new skill every month, and I'm teaching about all the stuff that like people have their business on, the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, like whatever it may be. And then I'm going against a curriculum that's updated once every four months. And they have just started to freaking add courses on like social media, but the courses that they're offering is like the history of internet marketing. Who, as a business owner, who's gonna deliver more value? Right. So I'm, I'm speaking to you guys out loud right here, not because I'm trying to sell you, because I'm getting myself in the mindset of what I'm selling against inside of this um, advertisement. So I'm going to try and set up my flow first and I'll write this out and I'll copy and paste it to you guys, too. All right. So um, first thing I want to do is piss people off, catch their attention. And I want that rage to be against college. Some of our people have already graduated and they're past there. 
some of the people are currently in and some people never went. I gotta be conscious to all that. So that's the first framework. Second thing that I need to do is make a promise that's gonna get them to stick around. Like, why am I reading? Okay, why am I reading? So I need to like offer something like promise slash offer you know, why you still want to stick it out. Okay, then after I make the promise, um, I want to really dive in on, on the necessity. Okay, so for example, and this is really goes into just doing this for a while and understanding the different objections that people are going to throw um, at you. But the one thing that you realize with objections is that you'll see the same ones all of the time. If you've been selling the same product or service, there's never anything new that people are saying. So with that, it's like, it's like boxing. Like if you can anticipate where the next punch is going to, you can always evade it and you can set up your counter punch. So I know people here, one of the objections that they have to being in the gene pool is this. I don't really need to learn all this social media stuff. It's just a phase, okay? So I'm actually note this too, as I go through this flow. Objections that they're gonna have. Don't need to know it. Next is, um, hire somebody else to do it, which in some cases works, but for a lot of people, it actually doesn't at first. Um, so don't need to know it. Hire somebody else to do it. That's a, that's another thing. Um, other objections that they may have. Oh, I already know this stuff. I already know this stuff. Okay. These are the ones that are top of their mind here. Um, one is, uh, why, why me? Right? Why me? Why the team? Um, that's another objection that they can have. Uh, and then the other one is, huge one, is it worth it? Okay? So is it worth it? Those are the things. I'll copy and paste some of these notes here with you too as I'm going through. Now, this isn't like an exact formula, but I think it's helpful when I give you guys these things so you can see what I'm typing. All right. All right. Okay, so there you guys go. Is it worth it? Cool. Um, and then the other thing that I take into consideration is what do I have to solve all of these objections? Like what tool am I going to come up with? So for example, when somebody asks me, is it worth it? Um, the best comparison I can give them to kind of defeat that objection. Is it, is it worth it? And, and by the way, I think it's like 697 bucks. Okay. 700 bucks. Now watch this. Everybody right now, type in the dumbest class that you took in college. Like, come on, the class that you took that was like, you chose it because you knew you'd be dicking around, but like, it was just like, it was fucking worthless. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe it was theirs, whatever the hell. But what what is it? Right? What is it? 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 Learn all this on, on YouTube. Yeah, I can learn all this on YouTube. <laughs> Those fucking people are the funniest to me. So yeah, they're an objection. We kind of, I'll show you how I dis, dis, dismantle them in the, in the ad copy. Music theory, okay? Music theory, art appreciation, perfect, okay? Yeah, there you go. Let's go with art appreciation. Now, some people fuck with art. You really like it and that's great, okay? I'm not necessarily talking to you about this, but now here's the other question. Uh, for those of you that went to college, how much did a class cost you? How much, no, I take it back. How much, yeah, how much did a single class cost you? A single class, there you go. How much did a single class cost you in college? And if you didn't go someone close to you, how much were they paying for their classes? How much were they paying? Someone says library skills, computer tech. Wait, library skills, that's fucking funny. The Dewey Decimal System, sci-fi movie research. I love it. There you go, look at it, Sasha. Shout out, Sasha. Uh, 3,600 bucks. Okay. 3,600 bucks for random ass class. Okay. Um, 3K, other people are saying 800 to 1,000 bucks. Okay. Now, watch this. As I'm going through, and all this is to address the objection of is it worth it? I'm just, I'm prepping the information I need to give and then I'll sexy it up later. But I need to know what, I, like, what direction I'm going to hit this thing. So, I'm gonna use a tactic which just is comparison of it's worth it. 
So in other words, really, you're on the fence about paying 600 bucks to get a lifetime membership, meaning as long as the fucking program exists, I'm going to be teaching new skills every month and I bring in, even if you don't like me, I bring in some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world to teach once a month. So until I fucking quit on this whole thing, until I die, we just get the fuck over it. You pay one time for 700 bucks or, um, and if, if, if someone's thinking no, like, dude, you pay 700, you won't pay 700 bucks for this, but you pay 3,600 bucks for your art class. You pay 3,600 bucks for your sci-fi fucking movie research course, right? So it's kind of ridiculous, right? And so the other reason, and this is just a note where my head went, is like some people, you know, I mean, hold on, screwed over. I'm just writing notes. You guys will see it screwed over. Um, I'll circle back to that because I don't want to lose my thought. But uh, nonetheless, as I'm going through the structure, so I know one of their objections is going to be, is it worth it? All I'm going to do is do some kind of, and this is where I'll use humor too. I'm going to use some kind of funny comparison about how like you're crying about 700 bucks, but you're the same motherfucker that, you know, wasted it on all this other random shit, you know. And matter of fact, and watch this, then I go deeper into it. I say, and you couldn't even afford the classes. So you borrowed money for four years and then paid interest on it for 20. P.S. I broke the payments. Uh, P.S. I even give you a two pay option, something like that. Anyways, I'm just noting this, but I'm, I'm thinking out loud here too, okay? So basically when I get to their biggest objection was is like, hey, should I really be spending my money here? That's the tool I'm gonna to use to overcome it. I don't know how it's gonna fit in my ad copy yet, but I know that's how I'm going to deal with it, okay? And then I just go through each objection like this really quick. Is that helpful to go through and talk through this part? Give me some feedback here, because I don't wanna just be teaching for fucking nothing. Um, but um, is this helpful to like go through this and all? Let's see, yeah. Helpful? Okay, good. Um, and then the next thing, another objection. Again, I'm just going through and I'm plucking away all the fucking stupid shit they can say. All right. Next is, I can learn all of this on YouTube or Google. I can do it by myself. Okay? Now, this right here, you have to really understand what people are saying here. This is an arrogance thing. So the first thing that I want to tell people who say this is, okay, cool. Why don't you have the result? No, no, I know. It. It's super easy. It's totally easy. It's like you can just look it up, right? Okay, cool. Why aren't you balling the fuck out right now? No, no, just look it up on Google. Like, no, fuck it. Yeah, it's why aren't you balling this fuck right now? No, it's just, it's just all you got to do is look it up. What the fuck? Why aren't you balling? But then I have to understand how that sounds when you break this on a public forum. That will just make me sound kind of like arrogant of like, look at me, I'm so cool and I'm not. And that's not the objective or what I want to portray here because that's not it. That's not you know, like my shit, you know, even though people are fucking stupid. Like that's, they got to think about that. Okay. So how is another way where I can make them feel the same things without coming off as an asshole is where my brain goes. I can learn all this on YouTube. My brain goes to analogies, bite-sized things that they can realize. So when I see that, I go, okay, note, you can also learn how to do open heart surgery on YouTube and Google too. All of the information is available. And then it's self-conversation. Oh, you wouldn't do that. But uh, because you'd kill someone but you're willing to kill your business that provides for the people you care about most. Yes, ah, good. So you guys understand how I'm like, I'm seeing these weapons. You see what I'm saying? And I'm just going through and I'm just knocking it down. Oh, that's my bike, that's my guy Cody. Cody, hey, hey, hey. Bro, after talking with you one day and I had a lifetime membership option, my average DPO shot over 400 bucks. Really freaking Mark Genius? Fucking Cody, he's a man. Everyone, Cody's a man. If he's here right now, that's my motherfucking guy. Extremely intelligent. 
um, and funny as fuck uh, also too. Um, strong writer, strong video guy, strong sales guys. Everyone follow Cody. He'll be at the event, by the way, if you're coming out to hang out with us. Um, okay, so backtracking. Basically, before I write this ad copy, all I'm doing is I'm just fucking literally waiting for every fucking objection that this potential customer can have. And the only way I can do this is if I understand my audience. I'm just waiting. And then I'm coming up with fucking what do I want to say to overcome these, okay? And then... The next objection that we have on that list that I pasted earlier is why me, okay? Now, this, has, this part goes into psychology. And the reason why me is I can sell myself all day, but when people try and sell themselves to you, you have to think about the position. Positioning, when people try to sell themselves to you, it comes off like not that confident, desperate, needy. Those are not, that's not the place you want people to be in when they buy from you. But the ultimate why me is when the people that they respect and already trust give you the nod. The fact, like, for example, I'll put it to pop culture. When Drake first came on the scene, this motherfucker was Wheelchair Jimmy from Degrassi. Now, if you don't know what any of that shit is, it was like the corniest TV show ever that was like Canada's like biggest show and he played this like dude who was in a wheelchair, but like he rapped a little bit. He like could not have had a cornier position. So people are like, well, how did Drake get big? How did people accept him? Why me? Why Drake? Simple. He got Lil Wayne, who at the time was the biggest artist in the world of any genre, to co-sign him. He brought him on board. to Drake. And then Lil Weezy, they did songs together. They, they put him out, right? And uh, that's really, that was the flow. That's how they, that's how they started to get. And then Drake became popular. So for me, y'all, I'm teaching on a live stream right now. I'm teaching on a live stream right now, but I'll call you back. What are you, what are you, are you good? I think I'll get. Okay, I'll call you back. Bye. <laughs> it's my homie right there. Um, okay, so next is, so why me? So what's the technique that I'm going to use here? Now, over the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to, um, bring in to teach a lot of really badass entrepreneurs, really smart people and connect with them. So as opposed to arguing with them, I want to use credibility and, and show like clips or some kind of connection with top influencers, right? Now that's a tactic I can use. That wouldn't work for everybody, but that's the position that we're in. So I'm going to use that for the why me. So basically the answer to the why me is because, well, they said so. Not because I said so, they said so. It's always more it's always more powerful when they say so you didn't say it about yourself okay um let's see uh hire somebody else to do it now this is an option that for some people this this has to do with translation this is actually important i want you guys to understand this so when i'm writing this ad copy and i'm getting to the psyche of the potential customer and i know that some of them may be thinking well i'm not going to buy right now because i'm just going to hire somebody to do it for me well 90% of the time when someone's doing that, it's really out of fear. And the truth of what they're saying is, hey, I don't think I can do it. I don't have the tech, I don't have the technology skills. I don't have the time. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have da 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 da. And they're just making that up so they don't actually have to be responsible for their own fate. This is actually really popular. This goes into deep psychology, but people love to try and outsource the biggest problems in their business because then they always have someone to blame. It sounds like this. Yeah, you know, our, our business is great, but fuck, I just keep getting fucked over by all these marketing people out there. They're just giving me the runaround and da da da. It's just been a fucking horrible experience. These marketing guys and girls, they just, they just can't get it. See what happened there? And I don't have to take any accountability for my own failures now. Right. So the way I would handle this objection is a moment of truth as part of it and um, a moment of need is what I'll call it. And what I mean by that is this hire somebody else to do it. Now, listen, I'm going to actually ask you guys, let me get some feedback here. Scale of one to 10, how important is it for your business to get customers every single day on a consistent basis? To like have lead flow, like every single day there's like opportunity and shit coming in, especially for my people who have businesses here with fixed expenses and stuff. Scale of one to 10, how important is it? How important is it? Scale of one to 10. 
how important is it scale of one to 10 for you to consistently get like leads and shit like that all the time? How important is it? Okay. 10. Then I also got a 10.5 and then I also got a 10 and I think you guys are going to keep going along those lines. Another 10, um, another 10. Here's what I want you guys to realize. I know that answer. Obviously I'm asking kind of rhetorically because the truth is business starts with marketing and nothing in a business happens uh, without it. Like, in other words, if you don't have marketing, you don't have anybody for your sales to talk to, or you can't sell anything, there's nothing to sell in the first place. Without sales, there's nothing to fulfill. Without fulfilling anything, you don't actually build up operations or need infrastructure or legal or anything like that. It all starts with marketing. Marketing is the tipping point of business. Therefore, if people do not have it, they're fucked. Now, is there ever a point in time where you're not going to need marketing? For 99.999% of businesses, there's not. So, does it make sense to outsource and put the most important thing in your business in the hands of somebody else? The most important thing in your business that dictates the amount of income that you make, the way that you provide for your family, does it really make sense to put that in somebody else's hands that's also dealing with 10 other clients that you're paying 500 bucks a month to? For a lot of people, you're not at the place. That's why you got to learn this stuff for yourself. Some people make sense for most people it doesn't right now. Okay. So that moment of truth, that moment of need of like, hey. So these are all the objections that I'm going through. Now, watch this, you guys. Um, I'm going to paste this to you guys. Uh, and then here's the, here's the other one, another objection, like overcoming like technique that I like to use. And this is like the brush off. Like, I'll make a corny, uh, a, a kind of a backhanded joke around these people. But the people who are going to be like, I already know this stuff. I would just say something along the lines of, I can't help you. But in a funny way. Like, almost make it ridiculous. You know, um, I'll say, like, call them out. But like, hey, if you're one of those, I might even say that in the ad. Yo, if you're one of those people who already knows everything and you got it all figured out, just keep scrolling. I can't help you. I can't save you. You already know everything. You're good. There's nothing I can give you. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing anyone can give you. You already know the shit. So ignore you, right? You basically position it in a way where nobody wants to take accountability for that negative thing because nobody wants to be that fuck boy or fuck girl. It's just not that thing, okay? So I'm going to copy to you guys what I just wrote. Okay. By the way, when I'm writing this on my computer here, I'm doing this in a Google document. And I do it in a Google document so I can share it with my team in a moment's notice, all right? So tell me, give me the, give that a like. I just copy and pasted it into the chat right there. Give it a like, give it a like, give it a like right there. All right, if you can see it, just so I know that it's working. We're working, okay, cool. People starting to come through. Um, so anyways, that's kind of like the, the writing session, okay? Now I know everything that I need to talk about within the ad. Now, the last thing you do after you kind of figure out this, after I establish like kind of what I need to go through, which is like, you know, hey, you want more money? Like, this is where my narrative is going now. You know, I'll freestyle. Hey, let's cut to the chase. You need more cash. College fucks you because it didn't prepare you for the challenges that you're facing. In addition to that, Mark Zuckerberg fucks you. YouTube fucks you. Um, your friends and family fucks you. Now, why am I saying that like so harshly? It's a note to me to remember my tongue, okay? So when I'm writing these things, you have to remember meet the customer where they're at. Unfortunately, we do live in a generation where people love to not take accountability for them not getting results. So in ad copy, I meet the customer where they're at because before, like once they come into my training courses and they're in, the first thing I'll tell them, and it's a core value that's written on our company walls is everything is your fault. But when you put that in ad copy, at times it could be a little argumentative and doesn't actually move the customer forward. So sometimes I'll meet them exactly where they're at. Dude, you've been in business for a couple of years. You're trying to figure this thing out. You haven't been able to make it work. You can't figure out why 
There's not enough time in the world. You got all kinds of personal shit going on. You feel stuck. Okay. Well, let me tell you, it may not be your fault. Let's be honest. When you went to college to prepare for this thing and you invested $100,000, you spent four years of your life, you lived with a friend, you lived off top ramen, they didn't teach you a single damn thing that translated into money in your pocket getting your first customer. Then Facebook comes out with this fantastic platform that's life-changing, but then they change the algorithm every three months and you can't seem to get ahead. You can't catch a break. Then everybody says you should do this paid advertising thing, but when you put money in, you end up just losing it fast and you feel like you're just giving away your donations. And then there's the Snapchats and the YouTubes and da da. How can anyone keep up with this? See, I just like aggravated the pain. Like, and this is my brainstorm, right? So I created all these enemies, right? Like Mark, college, da 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 da. Now here's the need. The need comes into play. Um, Hey, I get those problems, but you know what sucks? As frustrated as you are reading this, and I like to break down the fourth wall so they know I'm human, especially as you are you know, reading this, and as much as you may agree with everything above, it doesn't change the fact that you still need to figure it the fuck out. You still need to figure it out. Because if you don't learn how to blank, blank, and blank, Newsflash, you will go out of business. So, transparent, I'm going to sell you something that will help you prevent that shit from happening. Happening, and you'll thank me for it later. Humor, parentheses, did I really just say I'm going to sell you something. Um, Doesn't that break all the rules? I'm just supposed to nurture and create content and maybe one day you'll buy something. Uh, Fuck that shit. It's stupid and not true. Here's what winners do. They make investment, and I'm just, I'm noting shit for myself, but you guys are watching me do this. So I'm pretty much creating like these two people, right? So there's the, like accountability versus like winners, okay? The people who are doing it well, right? The 4% that actually make it to a million dollars a year plus, okay? This is winners versus the, the 4%. And it's the losers are blaming everything like, oh, no, Mark Zuckerberg Zuckerberg did it. Oh, no, college didn't fucking prepare me. Oh, no, my friends gave me the wrong advice. Oh, no, my family didn't support me. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. But the winners, the winners, they fucking invest into themselves. Here's what the winners do. And then I may actually give some, like, you know, real life examples of those. And I'll talk about really well-known people, you know, like Jay-Z. When he did this, he learned from here. Justin Bieber, when he came from here, he was, you know, linked up with Usher and Justin Timberlake, you know. Uh, then I'll put it to, you know, athletes. Hey, when he was here, he got cut from this time. You know, what he did, he got with this person. Da, da, da. You start to give these credible factors, right? So now you're using the credibility of, like, mainstream people with massive following, and that will be linked back to you. That's a whole different thing. But, um, yeah. So anyways, you're starting to see my flow. You're seeing how the other shit goes. And I'll I'll give you guys these notes so you can kind of see. I don't know if this is going to make a lot of sense to you, but um, I'll show you kind of how I write. So this is like the process I go through, right? And then as I start to get all of these things, I know what I need to include. Now I start to insert it inside like a storyline that I like to create. So I just pasted that to you guys right there. Hold on now. Okay. Pasted that to you guys right there. Um... Yeah, you guys got it. Okay, cool. Good share. So anyways, um, that's kind of the flow. And then after I kind of like now I've identified like, okay, I see this tone that I want to go to. I, I may do, I kind of think of like how it's going to start. Like what's the shell? What's the context? What's the framework that I want to live in? Uh, so for example, on that ad that I wrote, read to you guys a little bit ago, it was all this analogy of like, you know, if you had to drive across country to a random place in the in the middle of nowhere, how would you get there if you didn't have, you know, great sound advice? So now I have to kind of make this logical, fun analogy of how 
you know, how can you make more money, which is the thing that they want, and how can you get your business finally being fucking profitable um, if you have all of this bad advice? You know what I mean? Like, you you have all of these bad things. So now I'm kind of thinking about the benefits of the gene pool and the community that it brings. So I may even attack someone's environment in the beginning. Say, you know, opening question, does, is this what your life be like? And, and go through and say, like, you know, most of your friends are this. Uh, then I'm going to be specific and I may exclude some people. Now, I'm listening to the framework of college, of just the ridiculousness of college, but do it in like a really humorous way. So I'll be thinking of like a lot of jokes. Another thing that I do for my writing stuff is like, wa like watch this. A lot of the stuff, you don't have to be this fucking creative fucking genius, right? Like, I'm going to Google right now funny college jokes. And then I'm going to click Google Images. I wish I could share my screen with you right now. so bad. Um, then I'm going to hit Google Images, and there we go. I have no exaggeration, probably like, I don't know, 100,000 different college jokes, and I can just click them. It says, in school, if you were late, you had to sit on the last bench. But in college, you were late, you had to sit on first bench. I don't, I don't understand that. That was a stupid one. Uh, but anyways, there's a whole bunch of shit that's here, college jokes, okay? And what I like to do is I like to skim through these and then the like the top funny ones I see, like the top three or top five, I copy and paste them into my Google document. And I don't know where they're gonna be used yet within that framework, but I know I can insert them, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, this is, there's so many here. <laughs> College be like, yo, hey, professor, how are you doing today? Professor, it's on the syllabus. Oh, yeah, that's kind of funny, but not really. Anyways, you guys get the point. You see the strategy. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's already 841 of my time, so I'm going to take off here in a second. Maybe I'll do a couple Q&As. But I hope that gives you guys a framework. For anyone who's been rocking with me still this whole time, scale of 1 to 10, how helpful has this been to just go through this process copy and paste you guys what I'm seeing. And here's the cool thing, if you're wondering, well, what, well what's this gonna look like? Well, I'm gonna finish it tomorrow, and then we're gonna actually turn this ad on and make you this offer. So cool thing is, is you'll, you'll know because you'll be getting targeted with the exact ad and you'll know how I got there. And what's gonna be fun is I'll even use this video once I create the other ad to show people how the ad copy, because like when we really do a good job in ad copy, you'll see it in the comments. People are like, yo, this ad copy was fire. And it's another reason why people want to learn from you. So um, yeah, if only grades meant money, 4.0 equals a million dollars. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Even though I'd be broke because my grades were shit. Okay. Um, so yeah, they weren't shit. They were just whatever. It's like a 3.0, 2.8 or something like that. All right. So 100 time was right on for me at 10, 10, 10. Cool. 100, 11. Good. 10. Target for me. Good. Um, now watch this, you guys, even, even you guys here, like how many of you are here right now, be honest, that are not in the gene pool that are not just say, say you're in the gene pool. If you're in the gene pool and say, you're not, if you're not, if you're in the gene pool, let me know. And if you're not, you're not, if you're in the gene pool, let me know. we got another 10 right there. I appreciate you. Billy, I need like an overview on Facebook Mark, Do you have a course? Yeah, dude, I got fucking like 30 courses inside of the gene pool that I've taught and fucking everything. Like, yeah, man, like I do. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, so uh, like Lauren says, she's in the gene pool. Shout out to Lauren. Uh, I think John says he's not. Steven says he's not. Lifetimer. I appreciate you. Not me. I wish. Got you. Shout out to Eric Winning. That's my guy right there. If you guys need a booth and you're in the trade show world, coach that guy. He's the man. Um, in the gene pool, not in which case. So watch this. You guys see here, it's like 50-50, right? Some people are not here, but other people are on the gene pool. Now, let me ask you a question. If you found this helpful right now, this little demonstration, this is like, this is, this is a fraction. I don't even have like my cameras where I can share my screen. I don't even have worksheets to give you. We don't even have like the Q and A portion. You don't even have like the private Facebook. Like this is all we do. Imagine if you just learned this much in this fucking little forty-five minute session I gave you, and you had a resource like this for life. How do you not justify the means to find a way to make it work? Right. I always give the example. A lot of people say like, "Hey, money holds me back," but I'll tell you what. People always find a way to do what they want. You ever notice that? 
with humans, people always find a way to do what the fuck they want and to get what the fuck they want. But only when they classify their want as a need. When you shift it from a want to a need, which is what you're gonna see me go through on this ad copy, you start to get shit done. For example, everybody here, you need a place to stay. You need somewhere to sleep. So what do you do? You figure it out. You call someone, you do an Airbnb, you borrow money from a friend, you ask if you can sleep on their couch, you say, hey, I'll, I'll clean the dishes in return, etc." You gotta take your fucking wants and turn them into a need, right? Do not look at this as an elective. Hey, you know, I, this would be nice to get this information, but I can't afford it, so, mm. That's some lame shit. That's how. That's a, that's a great mentality to keep you stuck. You know, you need to learn this stuff, so you got to do it, right? And if it's not from me, well, learn from somebody else who you know has the smartest entrepreneurs in the world come into the studio, teach live, makes it humorous as fuck, has like the tightest production out there, and like I don't know, learn from them, right? Just go to fucking college. They'll only charge you two hundred thousand dollars for it and teach you about you know Uranus and Pluto and Saturn stuff. Anyways, you guys get the point. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you guys will see the ad and, um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, shout out to my libraries here. You guys will see the ad. You'll see it running. Now here's the other thing, the video, I didn't talk about that. So there will be one story. Um, that is really outlined here and it's really powerful so some of you guys were there i had a workshop here in san diego at the hard rock hotel uh, in 2017 and um in that workshop i i announced the jingle studios for the first time and um the plan has changed of what it looks like and but nonetheless i announced live like hey we're building this thing so we have this really cool video that we're going to show basically from the first time I announced it to all the demolition and construction that's happening now. And you get to see kind of this vision being built, which tugs at any entrepreneur's heartstrings because that's, we all get that taking something and turning it into something else, taking nothing and turning it into something that can then help people is like, it's like what we all share in common. So anyways, that's the story based aspect to it. So you're going to see a lot of this ad copy that I just wrote out here plus some story-based stuff that goes with the video of the journey and um, should be good stuff. So anyways, I'm um, glad you guys found it helpful. For those of you that did, thanks for hanging out with me on this late Sunday night. Um, now I'm going to take this and clean it up a little bit so that tomorrow I can just bang this out and uh, we can turn into something special. So um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, hopefully you do when you see this offer floating around, you take us up on it. Um, it would be in your best interest. And hopefully some of you guys even come out to San Diego and sit in the studio live to, to feel what we're creating because I have a feeling it's going to be nothing like anything else in the world. And shout out to everybody here today that's already invested in our programs or has been doing so for years. You know, I got nothing but love, gratitude, and, and so much respect for you. And anything that you need, you already know the deal. We're here to support real ass people. That's why I'm here doing this live stream right now. I'm not even offering, I'm not even selling anything right now, you guys. How about that? I always sell something on my shit. But nah, not today. Just take it. Hope you learned something valuable. All right. I'm going to take off. So much love. I appreciate y'all. And um, yeah, I'll probably get a game of video games in and then uh, start the day. So I uh, appreciate you guys. Okay. Appreciate it. Later. Dunzo. McBunzo. I don't even know how to shut this thing off. I never work for my home office. This is my home office. I, it's very rare. Oh, I see it. There's a big button that says in live video. Anyways, appreciate you guys. Sorry for the no haircut, no shave thing, but I got another 20 days of this and then I'll be all fresh for our event and shit. Yes. Weight loss challenge update. Yeah. 25, 27 pounds down, something like that. So I've got to get to 40 and I got like 40 days to do it. It's like 40 days lose 13 pounds. So I'll get there, but I'm, I'm thinking of the next wave. Once I lose this first 40, then I'm going to lose the next 30 after that. And Keep it there. So, all right. Pieces. Later. Q&A. If you got something quick, if you can type it in, in two seconds. Clicking the button for in live video. If it's there, Laura and I will click it. It's 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 going away. 
is going on? I don't see any questions, Lauren. It's it's going away. Did you enjoy the training? Oh, it's happening. That's it's what's going up. Away. Uh, Make sure that you uh, uh, like, uh, comment, and subscribe. And share it. What are you waiting for? Like it. Share it. Life has something special right here for you. Everything has a season, a reason to grow. So don't be discouraged by your obstacles. No, never give up. You're right.